Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's episode is another Top 5 Tuesdays and we're going to be talking about powders. This was actually a viewer request, so neither Mona nor I came up with this actual category, but again, we were both surprised that we hadn't covered this yet. So if you're interested in hearing what my top five powders are, then just keep on watching. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, my name is Michelle. Welcome. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I also have all of my social media handles down below if you want to follow me on Instagram or Snapchat. If you like live swatches and unboxings and things like that, then definitely follow me on Snapchat. So the first powder I want to mention is definitely no surprise here on this channel. I talk about it all the time. I use it almost every single day. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. And I have it in the shade One Fair. And you can see that I've hit pan. <laughs> I just love this powder. It is weightless. I mean, and when I talk weightless, sometimes I apply it I'll get distracted or whatever and I'll come back and I'll think, did I apply my powder? What I love to use this powder for is setting my under eye because it is so weightless. It never makes my under eyes look cakey or dry. Um, it doesn't emphasize lines or anything like that. It just sort of sets my concealer perfectly. As for the rest of my face, it does set the rest of my face fine but I do feel like I kind of have to build it up a little bit because it is so finely milled. It is such a weightless powder. If I just put kind of like one layer to set my face, it's okay for the moment, but I feel like it wears off fairly quickly. So I do feel like I kind of have to build it up for the rest of my face, but this is perfect for around the eye area. The second powder I'm gonna mention is the Le Mer um, Pressed, I think it's called The, sheer pressed powder that is the full name and i have it in the shade light 12. this is what it looks like this one has a little bit more coverage it's a little bit thicker than the charlotte tilbury but i really love it because it it does give my skin like a flawless sort of finish it kind of i wouldn't say that it blurs my skin i just feel like it kind of just smooths out my skin and there's a little bit more longevity with this powder so i feel like when i dust this all over my face to set my foundation it does it it does it all day unlike the charlotte tilbury where i feel like you know midday or kind of like mid-afternoon i have to sort of kind of touch up i don't feel like i have to do that with the la mer powder i feel like this kind of goes on and it's there it's kind of like there to stay so when i'm feeling like i want like a really kind of like full coverage kind of look i will set my entire face with this including my eyes but i prefer using the charlotte tilbury around my eyes only because it doesn't feel quite as heavy and this powder is really i'm describing it like it's so thick and it's so heavy it is far from thick or heavy it's just in comparison to the charlotte tilbury which is so weightless it is a bit thicker and a bit heavier than that powder i just realized you can see that i've made quite a dent into this powder already i absolutely love it i think it's great for like an all over face setting powder the next powder is another powder that i've actually had in my collection for a really long time and when i do use it i really really love it and i don't really know why i don't reach for it more often but this is the nars um translucent crystal light reflecting setting powder um, and this is the pressed version um, I don't have any loose powders actually in this lineup only because I don't use them that often. I only have a few in my collection. You know, I like them fine, but I always seem to prefer and reach for pressed powders more. So anyway, this is the crystal setting powder from NARS. So if you've never used this powder before, the first time you get it, there is a definite like layer on top of this powder. I actually had to take a spoolie and kind of scrape off the top layer. Once you scrape off the top layer, it's... It's, it's amazing. It is, um, it looks really white um, in the pan, and even if you swatch it, it looks very white on the finger, but on the skin, it's completely translucent, and it just sort of, maybe there's like this teensy tiny bit of like brightening, but other than that, it really is just very translucent. It's very, very uh, light. It feels like feathery in the hand. Yeah, I just love it. It just really has a very, very lovely finish, and I will use this all over the face. It's, you know, around the eyes and to set my foundation. I think it's great for that. So that's the NARS. I just call it, I always call it the crystal powder. Okay, so the next powder I wanna mention is actually like a group of powders because it's really the formula that I like. And these are the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. 
they were created, I believe, they were created to be finishing powders versus setting powders. So they are really nice as kind of like a final step if you want to add like a little bit of a sheen and a little bit of like a blurring effect to your skin. I think these are really, really wonderful. This particular shade, Diffuse Light, is one that I like to use as a finishing powder, but also as a setting powder. As a setting powder, because it has that sheen, you really have to like, you know, having like a, like a satin sheen to your skin. Um, most people, myself included on most days, I just kind of want like a matte setting powder. And then if I want more of a glow, then I'll use these as a finishing powder. But occasionally I will use this as a setting and a finishing powder. As a setting powder, I will focus it just on areas that I want to brighten, like under my eye, tops of my cheekbones, and maybe like my T-zone. Um, and as a finishing powder, I'll kind of use this all over. It is definitely for the lighter, fairer skin tones because it does have like a yellow tint to it and it's pretty white, but it's very, very lovely. The other one that I really love to use only as a finishing powder, this I don't use to set my makeup. This is Luminous Light. This one is a little bit deeper than Diffuse Light. It's also a little bit warmer in tone. So this is really nice if you kind of just want to give your skin like a healthy glow. I love adding uh, this one kind of all over when I'm done with my makeup. And then um, I also pulled out, this is the palette. This is the Ambient Lighting palette. And this is Dim Light, Incandescent Light, and Radiant Light. I have both of these in the uh, larger kind of single pans. Um, the incandescent light I think is exclusive to this palette. So this one I love if I want like a subtle highlight, um, I'll kind of use it just on, on the tops of my cheeks. And then these two I will use um, as finishing powder but only over areas where I've kind of bronzed or contoured because they are deeper in tone. So I just love the Hourglass powders. These are really, really lovely if you want like a sheen to your skin. So the last powder I want to use is very new to my collection. I hauled this towards the end of last year, but I'm really loving it. This is the Chantecaille HD Perfecting Powder. This has the softest <laughs> feel to it if you swatch it. It is so, so finely milled. Uh, when I first touched the Charlotte Tilbury one, I thought the same thing, but this is actually like softer and silkier to me. It's an HD powder, so it probably has some flashback. I actually haven't tested it, uh, mainly because I don't, it's not like I get photographed. <laughs> when I'm out, uh, the paparazzi is not following me. So that's not really a concern for me, but I like using this. Um, I feel like this kind of falls between the Charlotte Tilbury and the La Mer. It has a little bit more substance to it than the Charlotte Tilbury. Like I feel like it lasts a little bit longer. I feel like it's not quite as invisible, but it definitely is not quite as high of a coverage as the La Mer. Not, not that that has a high coverage, um, but this is kind of falls in between. So I've been loving this one. It feels so wonderful. It's so silky smooth. I just really love it. So this is the Chantecaille HD Perfecting Powder. So that is it for my top five favorite powders. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below what your favorite powders are. I would love to hear. I am starting to kind of dabble a little bit more in loose powders, so maybe you'll see some of those start to pop up in my videos. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe down below. I would really appreciate it, and I'll see you in my next video.